praise the Lord. So there are two aspects we are considering tonight. One is God in our midst and then divine preservation from the portions that we've read and uh, other scriptures that I'll, I'll share with you. We will we'll be able to actually appreciate when God is in our midst. When God is in our midst, we, we can never be the same. For as long as God is in our midst, we cannot be the same. How do we know that God is in our midst? Luke tells us in, in Luke 17, uh, verse 21, he informs us that the kingdom of God is already in our midst. God and his kingdom is already with us. And uh, Psalm 46, verse 5, also the writer tells us that God in the, is in the midst of her. God is in the midst of her. She will not be moved. God will help her when the morning dawns. There are a couple of scriptures that explain to us when God is in our midst. But more importantly is that when God is in our midst, there are things that happen. The things that happen help us to appreciate the fact that God is in our midst. And, and we can see that reflected in the text that we've read in Matthew chapter 2, 13 to 15. We can also see it reflected in, in Genesis chapter 28, verses 11 to 16. In both texts, God is, 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 is present, but he's, pre he's present to preserve life. He's present to preserve life. When God is in the midst of his people, there's revelation. When God is in the midst of his people, there's revelation. And, and, and so we see in, in the case of Jacob, Jacob is fleeing from his brother Esau. He's running to his uncle's place and he gets to this place and, and he's tired, it's coming to evening and he picks a stone and, and uses it as his pillow. And as, as, as preparing, as thinking, this particular stone, perhaps it's a stone uh, uh, from the, the altar that his grandfather had, had established in, because it's the same location uh, uh, from the commentary when you read. It's the same location where Abraham built an altar. And maybe this particular stone that Jacob picks to, to use as his pillow, perhaps it's a stone picked from the altar that his father had, his grandfather had built and worshiped the Lord on that altar. Maybe, maybe not. But the key, the key thing we observe in the text is, is God shows up in, 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 in Jacob's dream. God shows up and we are told that Jacob sees the ladder is touching heaven, it's touching the earth. And on top of the ladder, the Lord himself is standing there with angels descending and ascending. We are not told what the angels were bringing, but I can only imagine that they were bringing good stuff for, for, for Jacob. And the Lord speaks to Jacob while Jacob is asleep. But what strikes you is when Jacob then wakes up. Jacob wakes up and he realizes that God has been in the place. And, 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 you know, I read it and uh, I kept meditating on it. Jacob says, God surely was 
in this place and I did not know. God was in this place and I did not know. When God appeared in the dream, there are things he's, he told Jacob that he was going to do for him. He promised to preserve him because he promises him that he's going to take him and that he will not be done with him until everything he has promised to do for him, has, he has done them. I mean, I can only imagine Jacob going to, to the, the next day, moving forward with confidence, knowing mm, this place, I, I am secure. I am I'm sorted. I am certain of of my next my next um steps i'm not walking it alone so when god is in our midst when god is in the midst of his people there's revelation and once you receive the revelation concerning a matter from the lord you're settled you are settled. Yesterday, but one a sister shared a testimony. I forget her name, but I remember the testimony. She said she, she's, she's been working at a place. She applies for a job in another place, and she's given. But the, her old place is not about to release her. You know, they are pleading with her stay. And, and she goes to the Lord to pray. And, and she said to us on this platform, honestly, I waited to hear the voice of the Lord and I was not getting. I was not hearing what God is saying. But then by the spirit of God, she's reminded, God has given you wisdom. God is, has, you are a mature Christian. There's a word of God available for you. Why are you leaving your, your, your previous place of employment? What, what is forcing you to leave? And, and to cut the, the long story short, she finally says, message to the new the off she's glad she stayed she's glad she stayed in in the in in her former place of employment meaning that in her spirit there was a revelation for her to stay because there is nothing that is pushing her to leave her previous workplace to take on a new workplace who knows Maybe the next place may actually not be favorable for, for, for you to work at. Praise the Lord. So when God is in our midst, when God is in the midst of his people, my, my point is that then there is revelation. And when, once you have revelation on a particular matter, when God makes reveals certain things to you, you are home and secure. That's one. The other aspect that we, we notice is that when God is in our midst, there's assurance of his constant presence. There's assurance of his constant present, presence. You are not wondering whether God is with you or not. So when God appears to Jacob, he actually assures him that he was going to go with him. He was going to be with him until what the Lord intends to do in Jacob's life has been done, God was not going to be done with him. When God assures us of his constant presence, friends, we, 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 we are glad that we are not groping ar ar along the walls. And for us, in our dispensation, God has assured us of his constant presence through his son. Through his son. What does Jesus say? In, in, in Matthew chapter 28, verse 20, he actually says to, to, to his disciples as he commissions them, likewise commissioning us, he says, I will be with you to the very end of, of the age. I will be with you. 
we have no reason to doubt that that Christ is not with us, you know, because he 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 is he's a deal is with us to the very end. Now, there are things he intends to do in every believer's life, and they may differ from one believer to another, you know. But you're sure that the things God wants to do in your life, Jesus is with you to the very end. You are not walking it alone. You're not walking it alone. So when we look at the case of Joseph, in Matthew, likewise, he, re he has received a dream from the Lord. The, the purpose of the dream is to preserve the child. Joseph, the Lord appears to him in the dream and, and says, get up, take the child and the mother and flee to Egypt. Stay there until those who want to kill him have been sorted out. Now, as I, as I thought through the scripture, I thought about, just imagine, just imagine that Joseph woke up and said, ah, did I hear correctly? No. Is it me? Maybe it's just a dream. Just imagine that he did not know how, how the, the, the angel's voice sounds. You know, it struck me that when he, he got up, the, the, the scripture does not say that when he woke up like Jacob, you see the scripture says in the case of Jacob, that when Jacob woke up, it's when it dawned on him that the Lord was in this place. But Joseph on this side, he, he, he does not doubt anything. We are told he got up. He got up, he, he understood the instruction. When God is in our midst, the instructions are clear. But many of us, many of us, we fail to pick the instruction because we do not know the voice of the master. We do not know the voice of the master, yet that the, the, the scripture tells us, the scriptures tell us, Jesus says, my sheep, hear my voice. You cannot, you, you will hear the voice of the, the person you know. When somebody you know calls, you're able to say, ah, that is so and so. So Jesus says, my sheep know my voice. But many of us, even when we are giving our testimonies, we are hesitant to say the Lord spoke to me. <laughs> we are not willing to confirm that I heard the Lord say this to me because we are not sure whether God actually spoke to us on a particular matter. Let me submit to us that we ought to develop a hearing capacity to hear the voice of the master. Because when he's in our midst, his voice is clear, praise the Lord. Brian, am I still, am I still on? Yes, sir. yes, you are. Yes, you are. Praise the Lord. When the Lord is in the midst of his people, when he's in our midst, his voice is clear. And once we pick his voice, you see he speaks to us to give us instructions. He speaks to us to, to, to command us to do something. He speaks to us to direct us on a matter. Now, sometimes we don't pick the instruction. For me, usually the vivid example that I, 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 I deal with is, is on the day to day. You know the day to day, you know how you get out of office and the voice of the Holy Spirit clearly says to you, you take this route. You say, ah, no, I'm going to pass through this route. Lo and behold, <laughs> you're stuck in the jam. Um, 
some some months like a month or two ago uh i think he's called nyesije was was uh, is the one who was facilitating he, he 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 said why should you be stuck in the jam like you do not have the spirit of god <laughs> i found it you know, I was like, hey, brother, do you know what you're saying? <laughs> what you're saying? Like, you know, like, why should you, have you not asked the Lord when you're setting off to, you know, like, he has instructed you. And on in several occasions for me, the Holy Spirit will say, don't go this route, go this direction. And in me, I will resist the days I have resisted. I have paid for my resistance. I have sat in the jam and, and said, oh, I wish I had listened. And many of us are like that. But when God is in the midst of his people, throughout the scriptures, we are able to tell that people here, people here, some of us are waiting for God to speak with thunder, with the lightning, but he's always speaking. He's always speaking. Praise the Lord. So friends, what is preservation? What do we understand with preservation? I mean, in the natural, preservation is, is, is a process um, of keeping things fresh or things alive. You know, like meat, you either refrigerate it for those the people that have refrigerators in the villages where there are, there are no refrigerators they will they will put salt on it and put it on the sun it, it remains alive it does not go bad even fish you know the fishermen they will put salt and preserve that fish it can stay for a year uh, people who, who are fishmongers will understand that you they, they, they preserve anger among the, their, their rules. It, it will stay for a year. Preservation. Now, in the spiritual realm, in the spiritual sense, we talk of divine preservation. God preserves us. When you think about the things that could take you out of action is when you appreciate that actually God preserves us on a daily. God is in the business of preserving his people. And, and you see it in the scripture uh, for reflection in Matthew chapter two, the life of the baby Jesus is preserved by the fact that his father, his earthly father, hearkened to the voice of the angel. Well, now you can argue that God would have found another way of protecting his son. But you see, Joseph would have missed the opportunity. Probably wouldn't be reading about him we would probably have known nothing about him. We would have known about him as one who failed to uh, pick the, the, the instruction. But you see, because he obeyed, because he responded with immediate effect, with no questioning, he fled to Egypt and God preserved his son. You see, See, God is going to use you and I to preserve life in a divine, uh, in a divine, in this, in the supernatural way. And and sometimes when we talk about the supernatural, we 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 are waiting for strange things so that they can so that we say no this is supernatural you know we are waiting for you know like when you have a wound and then it heals and the skin is back completely no not necessarily that is just but one aspect but preservation can happen 
even in the in the most obvious things and god is counting on you and me psalm 121 verse 7 to 8 the, the writer tells us that the lord shall preserve you from all evil and in this season god is in the business of using us to preserve life if we fold our hands and not get out, some life will be lost. Because the, the devil has gone, he has gone open now, you know. He is no longer camouflaging. So if you and I are not willing to stand out and challenge the status quo, for example, I'll, I'll take an example take an example of our schools at the moment we all know that some teachers received money we all we all know that some school at the school owners received money you know like the information is now available about the agenda of homosexuals and and, and lesbians the, the gay movement is now open you know, sometimes we, we are not thinking about it in a big picture. We are thinking about it, you know, like, hey, Mnange, you see gay, you know, they, no, there's, it's, a, it's an agenda. It's an agenda to inhalate, to, to exterminate the human race. That's the big picture. That's the big agenda. And God is going to use you and I to preserve life. So if you are a parent like me, if you are a big brother, if you are a big sister and you know the Lord, you need not shy away to instruct, to teach, to train the children to, 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 to love the Lord, to do the right thing, even when doing the right thing may mean that they would be unpopular because the, the, the direction we are taking, doing the right thing will mean that you're going to be unpopular. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Amen. So the Lord deserves, you know, the Satan is not friendly. He's not our friend. For him, those are objectives because his mission is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So he steals the people while we are watching. He steals them, and, and by deceiving them, he steals them. They may be your relatives, they may be your, your, your neighbors, they may, be, you know, they are people with us. Yesterday, Reverend Jafu challenged us, especially the, the intercessors, but all of us equally, he challenged us. Pray, when you're praying for, for church, do you pray for the parishioners, even those you know? You know, some people you've taken forever without seeing them. You don't even know where they, where they are. Do you pray them back to church? Do we pray that the Lord preserves their lives? We don't, we, we don't think about it. We need to, to appreciate that we are here to preserve life. Praise the Lord. So God is in the business of preserving our lives and we need not fear. We need not to fear. You know, Isaiah tells us, fear not. Fear not, I have redeemed you. So, so when you think about that scripture in Isaiah, I think it's Isaiah 43, uh, maybe one, one to about six or so. so. God is even to preserve you to know, he, he says to, to men in next, I will trade up some life for you. I will preserve you out in knowing 
he has already preserved us, but we need to act like people who know that God has preserved us. That is in the business of preserving us in a divine manner. Praise the Lord. In a divine manner. So unlike Jacob in, in Genesis, Joseph in, 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 in the book of Matthew, he, he, he's spontaneous. He gets up. He understood what he needs to do, and he did. He left for Egypt while it was dark. We, we need, we need to, to act as, as, as children of God. We need to heed the instruction and the instructions are given to us in the scriptures. The word of God instructs us on what to do. The word of God guides us on, you know, on where to go. So other than the audible voice of God or the still voice of the Holy Spirit, there is the word of God. And the word of God is a light. The word of God is light. It's a light unto our path. You know, with the word of God, we see where we are going. We know that God will preserve us. Because when he's in our midst, one of the things we have seen is that he's, he's present to preserve us. And, and, and we see it throughout the scriptures. God has preserved life. You know, God preserves his people. God preserves his people. And we are his people. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. So, so as, as I bring this close, you and I, God is counting on us. You and I have understood that God will preserve you, that God will protect you because he's with, with you. We need not to fear the schemes of the enemy. We need to arise and obey the commandment. We need to arise and do the work that God has called us to do. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So I, 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 I will pray and then hand over to you, uh, Brian. Let's pray. Our heavenly Father, the Father of our saints and glory, we give you thanks. Lord, we thank you that we are your children and that we are not under the dominion of Satan, that we are not under the control of the evil one. Lord, we thank you that you, 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 you have preserved our lives, but it is for a purpose, that you're with us, you have committed to being with us to the very end of the age. We have no reason to doubt that you are with us, even in the day-to-day -day things of life. You are with us when we wake up. You're with us when we go to sleep. You're with us when we go to work. You're with us when we go to the marketplace. You are with us. You are God with us. Emmanuel, you have promised to be with us and we take you by your word this evening. We take you by your word. We take you at your word because we are certain that you are with us. We are certain that you're in our midst. We are certain that what you have promised you are faithful to fulfill. You are faithful to, to, to see it happen in our lives. 
So we give you praise this evening. We give you glory, Lord our God. We give you honor, King Jesus. We lift your name high above all names. Lord, we thank you that in we, 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 we are in you and you are in us. We thank you, King of glory, that our lives are hidden in God. Our lives are hidden in Christ who who is hidden in God, our lives are preserved already. Lord, I give you praise. I give you praise that we have no reason to fear. We have no reason to worry. Sometimes we behave like, like, like Satan has taken over, like you have lost control, which is not true. Lord, we give you praise that we are under the preservation of God. Blessed be your holy name. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your word, King of glory, that your word is a light unto our path. Your word is a lamp. It's a lamp to us. It guides us. It, 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 it shows us where we need to change, where we need to adjust, where we need to move Lord, we thank you. Thank you for your word this evening. Thank you for your word. Thank you that you have promised to be with us. You are in our midst even this evening. Even on Zoom, you who is not limited by distance, you are not curtailed by time, you are not prevented by, by circumstances. Even on Zoom, you are with us. Where, wherever we are, logged in, you are with us. Even those that are in different places, you are God with us. So we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We adore you, King Jesus. We magnify you tonight. We lift your name above all names, O King of glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord our God, for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor uh, Swami, for, for sharing. Father, we, we thank you. We thank you for your word has been planted as seed in us today. We thank you, Lord God, for the clarity in which you spoke to your, your servant, your daughter, Sharon. And Lord, we are grateful that you continue to open doors for us in in growth, in pursuit of all things you. Indeed, as uh, as we have listened, the, 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 the wise men and, and, and Joseph, I think, give an example of, of obedience and the fruit that comes from it. And I think there is also, indeed, a major message for us to reflect on all things, divine direction, all God's leading. And, and I think Sharon emphasizes that God's leading is indeed available for all of us who are who are willing to listen to his voice and, and to obey to obey. So Lord, we, we 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 bring repentance for where we have resisted or rebelled against your direction, against your voice, against your your uh, against your ways in, in our thoughts, in our words, in our deeds. Yeah, we continue to ask for you for for a cleansing that indeed in your forgiveness we will find our way and return to your ways, O oh Lord, and walk according to the guidance of your voice, O oh Master and King, in the name of Jesus. And secondly, O oh God, I, I, I'm, I'm thankful um, that you, you grant us knowledge. Uh, indeed, Hosea 4 6 reminds us that, that, that people are destroyed because they know not. So, Father, we, we are grateful that we cannot say that today that we do not know. So we yield everything of us that is not of wisdom to you, God, in except for wisdom that is of you. And I pray and ask that God will, will use every knowledge you've given us this evening to, to serve you, to, to honor you in our days as individuals, as a community of believers, as, as a nation. And I ask for God that we may indeed yearn for more of you in knowledge through your word. And, and as our sister told us, to find the divine preservation in knowing you through your word. And I pray, Father, that with you in our midst, we will indeed continue to walk in confidence, knowing that our destiny will prevail. 
knowing that with you in our midst of all, we will seek to reflect and exemplify you and the reason of all our days. Father, we pray and ask that you will sustain our walking assurance and confidence of walking mm -hmm. with you in our midst. If Philippians 1 6 tells us and reminds us being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you, he who began a good work in each and every one of us will carry it to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. So, God, I pray that you must begun a good work in us and here in your work today, in acknowledging your presence and your midst in our community, in acknowledging that in pursuing all things you will find preservation of life. I pray, God, that you will continue to lead us to walk to that which is your destiny for us in the name of Jesus. And brethren, we we had study as well. Uh, I think Sharon spoke a lot to, to uh, the idea of God's voice and God's voice for for divine direction to hear in what he's saying. Uh, I think Sharon's words are when God is in the midst of his people, there is revelation. And we picked a lesson from, from Jacob and his dream. He had a nice story. Um, he had dreams and he had revelation. As we saw in Matthew 2, um, dreams as well, the Magi or the wise men of Joseph had. Lord, you remind us in your word, uh, in Joel 2, that you pour out your spirit to your people and that we as your children will walk in prophecy, that old men will dream dreams, young men will see visions. And Lord, we not so long ago as well had your servant speak to us about hearing your voice. So God, I pray that we as your children may discern your voice, that we may discern the messaging you give us in dreams and visions that are of you. I pray, Yahweh, that we, we, we may not meet the invitation to be to walk with appropriate um, spiritual insight, with spiritual eyes that allow us to walk in the direction you point us to in the name of Jesus. I did yield to the Holy Spirit who leads us and guides us. Holy Spirit reign, reign in us and refine us and lead us to that which is the direction God has us to in the name of Jesus. And Heavenly Father, indeed, we are today reminded and we continue to acknowledge and thank you that we are reborn in salvation because of, of your mercy. And it is because of your of your love and of your kindness that we that we live, oh God, that we live by your spirit, our refinement, oh God. And continue to pray for all of us and all of our families that God your mighty hand will guide and but we will continue to look for a renewal and a light to you as you walk in our midst. That Lord, in, in walking with you in our midst, we will find the preservation of life that you call us to in the name of Jesus. Indeed, Father, I thank you that, that um, we know that none of what has been spoken and shared here by Shawa can have push in our lives if not for your, if not for your power, if not for your presence, if not for you being in our midst. Because, Lord, without your enablement, without your partnership, we can do nothing. So, God, we receive your Holy Spirit now in our mind, that we will indeed find all the help, all the comfort, all the guide to live with, um, to live within your direction for us, to live within your commands, your tenets, your, your laws, your master and king, in the name of Jesus. May your spirit continue to come upon each and every one of your saints, O Lord, each and every one of your children. May you continue to, to shine your light over us and in us in all our ways in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for your servant, our sister, and your daughter, Sharon, through whom you have nourished us this evening, O oh God. And I pray and ask of you, Jehovah, that you, you will plan shine in every way to overflow. That God, in your goodness, you will grant Sharon and her family all their needs within your sight. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, we've been magnified. We, we honor you. Bless and extol your name as I pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord, and our Savior. Amen. Amen. Amen.